morning everybody today's topic is physical activity recommendations in diabetes and obesity and we have an app person to discuss about the physical activity here i have great pleasure in welcoming dr ashwin david who is a consultant diabetologist jodhades diabetes research center trivandrum he is very good in explaining about the physical activities as he himself is practice so and he is very well practicing tele management so welcome you ashwin thank you dr shija first of all let me thank jodhidev sir and the entire scientific committee for giving me a wonderful topic that is physical activity recommendation in diabetes and obesity coming to my topic physical activity recommendation in diabetes and obesity during the next 10 to 12 minutes of my presentation i would like to focus on the intensity of physical activity the type of physical activities physical activity recommendation for healthy adults physical activity recommendation in obesity and physical activity recommendation in diabetes and its complication coming to the intensity of physical activity intensity of physical activity is divided into low intensity physical activity moderate intensity physical activity and high intensity physical activity low intensity physical activity it elicits a slight increase in breathing rate as you all know a low intensity activity is just it just increases the breathing rate so it is it is like a normal walk a stroll in a level ground or leisurely cycling this can these are included in the low intensity physical activity coming to the moderate intensity physical activity it elicits a moderate and noticeable increase in rate and depth of breathing example walking over like a time of uh, for a robot 20 minutes at a speed of 3 to 6 kilometers per hour in a level ground aerobics cycling hiking cleaning the house these are all included in the moderate intensity physical activity coming to the vigorous intensity physical activity it elicits a noticeable increase in depth of breathing that means the person can't speak more than two to three words without pausing a breath that is like jogging aerobic dancing jumping ropes crossfit training etc coming to the type of exercises exercises are divided into aerobic exercise that involves usually large muscles that improves the insulin sensitivity reduces the body fat and improves the glycemic control example walking cycling swimming running crossfit training dancing etc resistance activity improves the muscle strength and stamina increase increase the glucose utilization in the body that is weight lifting push ups pull ups etc flexibility exercise that improves the stretching capacity that, that reduces the stress that reduces the possibility of injury related to exercise like stretching exercise yoga etc what are the safety concerns in exercise first thing is to choose an appropriate type of exercise or physical activity according to the fitness level of the of the person and the ability of each individual as you all know the famous quote rome was not built in a day start the physical activity at a slow pace and gradually increase the time and activity intensity of the activity over a period of time to achieve the goals supervision by a health care provider is most important thing always advise the patient to wear a person to wear proper gears like gloves shoes etc and the most important thing advise the patient to get adequately hydrated prior to physical activity and every 30 minutes during the time of physical activity approximately a 200 ml of water has to be taken 30 minutes during the physical activity physical activity recommendations in healthy adults to a total of 60 minutes of physical activity is recommended in daily it the activity can be divided into 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity 15 minutes of work related activity and 15 minutes of muscle strengthening activity work related activity includes carrying heavy loads climbing stairs etc and muscle strengthening activity that has to be performed 3 to 4 times a week physical activity recommendation in diabetes as we all know the four pillars in the management of diabetes are medications diet exercise and regular follow up physical activity recommendation before going into the physical activity recommendation in diabetes i would like to share a word of caution 
always deci decide regarding the physical activity in any person of, with diabetes after a complete evaluation and prior assessment. Sudden commencement, acceleration of ev every physical activity is very dangerous. Even high intensity physical activity, it should not be commenced at the highest intensity. Start with a low pace, then increase the intensity of the physical activity to reach to the maximum pace. Avoid exercise if the blood glucose is more than 300 mg per deciliter. Low blood glucose, that is hypoglycemia, if it is less than 70 mg per, per deciliter. In type 1 diabetes, if the fasting level is more than 250 mg per deciliter and in the presence of ketosis. Exercise is a recommendation in diabetes. It's the ADA 2016 latest recommendation in pre-diabetes. At least 60 minutes of exercise each day can be advised. In diabetes, at least 150 minutes per week of in aerobic exercise can be advised over a period of 5 days a week without 2 days of consecutive rest. Resistance training, if not contraindicated if, or if there are no complications in diabetes, can be performed at least twice a week. The ADA was clearly mentioning and emphasizing on the importance of sedentary lifestyle and to avoid sedentary lifestyle because as we all know most of the people are having a sedentary lifestyle especially the professionals so it is always better to advise the professionals to uh, to walk around if they are working for more than 90 minutes after 90 minutes I please ask them to walk around for a couple of minutes like two or three minutes and come back to their work it is important to have a warm-up that is five to ten minutes of warm-up and a five to ten minutes of cool cool down during each physical activity Increase the duration and intensity slowly. To prevent boredom, it is better to vary the activities day by day. Hypoglycemia is one of the most important complications which we see. It is better to check sugar before the exercise and after the exercise. Always advise the patient to keep a carbohydrate stack available so that if they have any symptoms of hypoglycemia, ask them to take the snack. Coming to activity recommendations in complications. Peripheral neuropathy, repetitive exercise on insensitive feet can cause ulcerations. So advise the patient on proper footwear, advise on to moisturize the feet regularly. Recommended activities are not weight bearing activities, swimming, cycling, rowing, chair and arm exercise. Contraindicated are prolonged walking, treadmill, jogging and stepping exercise. Nephropathy, as we all know, patients with nephropathy has a reduced capacity of exercise. So a low, low to moderate intensity form of exercise can be advised to the patient as high intensity exercise are absolutely contraindicated in patients with nephropathy. Coming to retinopathy, high intensity exercise will cause retinal damage and vitreous detachment. So the recommended exercise are low impact cardiovascular conditioning exercise like walking, low impact aerobics, stationary cycling and endurance exercise. This was a starter's walking plan recommended by ADA in 2014. This plan helps the people to start an exercise, start an aerobic activity and gradually increase the aerobic activity. It is a very simple chart. What we have to look is during the first week, ask the person to walk for a period of like um, 10 minutes. During the next week, ask the person to increase the time limit five minutes each. That increase five, li five minutes, ask the person to walk a brisk walk, carry a brisk walk. So first minute, first five minutes, the person will have a warm up. Next five minutes, the person will have a brisk walk. And the last five minutes, the person will have a cool down. Increase the intensity of brisk walk over a period of every week and over a period of time till you achieve the goal. Physical activity recommendations in obesity. Assessment of patients before initiating a physical activity is important. Assess the current physical activity level of the patient. Assess the um, readiness of the patient, assess the potential, um, assess whether there is any medical problems or medical, a complete medical evaluation including a pulmonary function test and a cardiac evaluation is necessary and assess the mobility of the patient. Mobility is divided into unable to mo move, limited mobility and no limitations in mobility. This is the obesity physical activity prescription which we all have to keep in mind while prescribing a physical activity. It consists of five points, it's called a FITI. It consists of frequency of the activity, intensity of the activity, time spent on activity, type of activity, and enjoyment level. The five A's of obesity management are ask, ask the patient for the body weight and discuss him regarding the body weight, assess the BMI, waist circumference, and obesity stage, advise the patient 
on the health risk of obesity and the benefit of modest weight loss, that is the 5 to 10 percent of the weight loss, achievable weight loss over a period of three to four months, and the need to, of long term strategy and treatment options. Agree on the realistic goal, advise the patient on the realistic goals, arrange a regular follow up, and motivate the patient when they are achieving all the realistic goals. Coming to the recommendation. Priority, our main priority in physical activity in obesity is to increase the energy expenditure. Aerobic training, 150 minutes per week of moderate physical activity at least or, or 75 minutes of high intensity activity has to be advised to the patient to achieve a modest weight loss. If they want a robust weight loss, the aerobic activity can be a moderate intensity aerobic activity can be increased to 300 minutes or a high intensity activity can be increased to 150 minutes. Resistive training can be advised to the patient that can be performed two to three days addressing the major muscle groups and it has to per be performed on the non-consecutive days. Emphasis has to be given on the core muscle groups. It is better to advise the patient to do an upper body workout on one day and on the third day advise to do on a lower body workout. Ask the patient to start with a single set consisting of 18 to 20 repetition over the first week, during the second week, it increases to 10 to 12 reps and during the last week, maintain a three sets of eight to 10 repetition. Take home message, physical inactivity should be avoided. Limit the time being spent in sedentary activity, not more than 90 minutes. 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity has, be, has to be advised. Aerobic activity, while advising, it has to be spread over five days a week, not more than two days of consecutive rest, resistance training two to three days per week, addressing each of the major muscle groups, and, and not, on, not, not on consecutive days. Thank you. Three minutes during the hemodialysis procedure, which includes pedaling, weightlifting, and other things. So it is must that their muscles are all damaged, badly damaged, so to regenerate the muscle function, exercise is mandatory in dialysis units. Thank you, sir. Two queries, one is physical recommendations for gestational diabetic and second for an underweight lean diabetic. Underweight? Underweight lean diabetic and oh. gestational, what would be your physical activity recommendation? Physical activity recommendation when you come to a uh, gestational diabetes, uh, it is better to do the physical activity rather than keeping rest. Advise the patient to start the physical activity at a very slow pace if they are not doing any physical activity. Start with a five minutes walk. You can divide the time into three sessions or four sessions like morning, evening and afternoon, what, whatever is preferable. And gradually increase the time. Don't ask them to increase the pace. Just they have to, what they need is to walk. And the most important thing in GDM is that we have to do a physical activity and you have to maintain the caloric restriction to achieve the maximum goal. So ask them to walk for at least 20 to 30 minutes, but don't increase any speed. It is better to walk at a speed of two to three kilometer per hour. For lean muscles and for lean body, underweight lean person, what we recommend is to just maintain the activity. It, they have to walk, they have to maintain aerobic activity at least 10 to 15 minutes a day. If they can do an activity more than that, they have to do, do activity. And if they want to increase the weight, they have to add the calorie according to that according to the ideal calorie needed by them, recommended by a dietitian. That would be the best option for them. Yes, I agree that what we do is every, we have made it mandatory that every patient who goes on dialysis, they have an echo done. And if there is, every year we repeat an echocardiogram to look for regional wall motion abnormalities. So a lot of them have uh, problems with exercise because they are scared. So what we do is that these exercises are only being done when they are on dialysis, not outside the dialysis unit or when they go home. So this has been practiced in Europe as well as in America to give exercise in the dialysis unit for patients who are on dialysis. Majority of the patients do have cardiac disease because of the hypertension and other comorbid conditions, you know, patients who are on hemodialysis. PD patients, they do their own exercises at home. We encourage them to do the exercise. No, it will be normal, but if they don't, I agree that. But then, you know, if you don't do exercise, you know, they just perish away faster than those who do exercise. I am sure that my colleague, Dr. B. Bina will also. Can you make a comment? Uh, actually, even exercise also helps in clearance, increase blood circulation, it helps in clearance, and it increases the confidence of these patients as well. 
So we do definitely advise some exercise. What, what happens in our country is when patients feel they're sick, they tend to remain uh, stagnant. They don't do much work. But when you give them the conference, definitely. We have done studies in our unit also uh, examining the urea and creatinine clearance following exercise. Sir. While performing exercise, if we make our patients aware that if you have some symptoms, heaviness or fatigue, and that is the point that you immediately stop it. That is the practical tip sure. to all of Regulated exercise. Regulated and give your mind. Don't do it out of extraordinary enthusiasm. If the blood sugar is more than 300, the person will have, uh, uh, mostly the sh when the sugars are high, there are a chance of a person to get dehydrated and that reduces the thermoregulatory function that in turn affects the person, person's body. One thing is that. Second thing is that during a more, more than, if the person is more than 300, if it is a new person, we won't be knowing what all the comorbid conditions which the person is having. So if you they advise exercise on the first day, that is not advisable. Start the treatment, continue the treatment. What we do is that continue the treatment for a period of two to three weeks. Once the sugar values are calmed down, we will advise for the exercise to start with a slow pace.